Liveware is the name of our group, and it's a kind of sarcastic play on software, hardware, and wetware. You know, wetware is often seen as the biological component of software and hardware, and liveware is a slang term for the human factor. So the human factor in art and technology is liveware. And the way we have put that together, essentially, is our specialties on sound and music, and Sean is visual arts and animation. It's sort of an audio-visual three-ring circus of expanded instruments, live coding, machine learning, sort of all coming together in this big multimodal experience, uh, sort of assaulting both your eyes and your ears from all angles. Coding is a way to communicate with the computer what you would like it to do. Live coding for me is taking that programming part and shoving it into an arts performance practice. So in this part of the stage, this is where the live coding action happens. Uh, Michael is over there with sort of all the audio aspect of the show and we're over here with all the visual aspect of the show. We are programming the computer live on the fly to modulate color or size or position of some of the graphics that I'm drawing on screen. I can edit lines of code if I want something to be more transparent, I can make it more transparent, or if I want it to be more opaque, I can make it more opaque. The code is seen and it's becomes it's kind of part of a new computer culture that appreciates code almost like a visual as well as literary art. A lot of the electronic music performance, which is sort of where live coding comes out of, is from live music performance on computers, uh, is that they were sort of suspicious of what people were doing on stage. They couldn't see what they were doing, so there was no difference for them between saying, I'm going to press play and I'm actually doing something. Um, and so they wanted to see what these performers were doing, which was to show us your screens, which was proving you weren't surfing Facebook and playing an audio file while you were supposedly performing. In several years, I have only had one catastrophic computer failure so far. I feel very lucky. Uh, there is always the chance that everything will totally collapse and crash because I write the wrong thing. Too nervous on stage, I accidentally write in 10,000 instead of 1,000. The machine locks. It could take minutes before the machine comes back and the show can continue. So there's sort of that edge of danger on it that makes it exciting. The live aspect of live coding is improvisatory can respond to whatever's going on, is on the fly. And music is on the fly, if it's good. You know, unless you press a tape and play like a robot, so there's something about music that's also on the fly. And so the initial work we did was inspired by music that has a high degree of pattern in it. The patterning in music can, can be codified. It's almost algorithmic. If you take music by J.S. Bach, if you take music by the American Minimalists, there's some, some kind of coded aspect to that. And we, we began our first concert, we, we pr played a lot of that kind of music. We also included a repertoire that was composed by me. And my music, in general, is improvisatory. <laughs> It's, it's more, not so much notated pre-scored music, and more music that has to be created on the fly. So that is a bit closer to the on the fly live coding. I want people to experience beauty, surprise, uh, a little bit of provocation in some cases, in the modernist tradition of art not necessarily being uh, entertaining only, but also making you question and, and think in new ways. And uh, the provocations might be 
Uh, that's, a, that's a strange combination to suddenly hear that followed by another thing that is, you know, sort of off the wall. Another aspect of the provocation would be that you would normally see a Fantasia type of correspondence between image and sound in a cartoon. Some of our provocation takes a more modernist, more, or you might say avant-garde uh, approach, which is to put the two things side by side and how they, they relate to each other is not so much forced by the artists making the connections, but by the audience seeing what they can see in the connection. And that is provocative.